Variables are containers that are used to store multiple types of data. Using variables makes it easier to label and store data, which can later be used throughout the automation process. A variable has an initial value, which may change during the program. The value of a variable can change through external input, data manipulation, or passing from one activity to another. A collection variable contains multiple data entries of the same type. It's useful to think of a variable like a box that stores data. For example, a box or variable named counter that tracks the number of times users clicked on an item. The user can configure a variable through its properties. The variables have the following properties. First, the name of a variable is its unique ID. It represents the title of the information that is being stored by the variable. A variable should be named to represent all possible values that it might contain. The name is essential in programming because the user accesses the variable through the name. Every variable must have a unique name and it should be descriptive enough so that other users can easily read it and save time. Second, Type defines the kind of data that the variable is intended to store. The type is declared when the variable is created. There are some specific types that are more generic and can accommodate different types of data. The most common or universal types of a variable are text, number, array, date or time, boolean, and data tables. Value is the data that a variable holds. The value of a variable changes throughout the process. Suppose a variable named tasks is assigned to is assigned a value 12 initially. At another point, tasks may be assigned the value 27. If no initial value is assigned at the creation of the variable, a default rule assigns a value to that variable. Lastly, scope defines from where the variable can be accessed in the workflow. The variables can be global or local. When the user defines a variable for the first time, it has a global scope. That is to say, it can be accessed from every part of the program. If the user defines a variable with a local scope, then Outside processes cannot access it. There are always several variables in use, so the users should avoid making multiple variables unnecessarily global, as it may cause efficiency issues. The name of a variable should be meaningful and describe the information it stores. This makes it easier to understand the purpose of the variable and to maintain it. For this, the user must follow the best practices for naming a variable and should use clear and meaningful names. The name of the variable should, be accurately, uh, should accurately describe its content. And the user should assign names in a consistent manner and adhere to using upper camel case. For example, if you name a variable first name, you capitalize F and N. Lastly, the user should keep variable names descriptive yet short. The type of a variable defines the type of data that can be stored inside the variable. The different types of variables available in at the UiPath Studio are string, number, date and time, data table, boolean, generic value, queue item, and array. These are discussed in detail in the subsequent slides. 
Also, in addition to these, there are two collection variables, lists and dictionaries, which will be discussed in other modules of this course. String or text variables are variables in which the users can store any strings, that is to say, a sequence of text. Arithmetic operations cannot be applied on them. These variables can store information like usernames, employee names, and so on. String variables are used to store text and reuse it in the code for specific actions. It can, it can be name of a person, address of a person, and so on. Um, in the example, consider an invoice that is being generated. There are various fields mentioned in the invoice. These fields are requested, are, are represented using different variables. Here, the name of the company is an example of a string variable, and it takes a string value. A Boolean variable, also known as true-false variables, has only two possible values, true or false. A Boolean variable is primarily associated with conditional statements, which allow different actions by changing control flow depending on whether a programmer's specified Boolean condition evaluates to true or false. Thus, Boolean variable is commonly used with control statements to determine the flow of a program as they enable the user to make decisions. A variable holds true when a condition is met, false when a condition is not met. For example, holds true when the item in the invoice is available, holds false when the item is unavailable. Number variables, also known as integer, are the variables in which the user can store numeric values. They are used to execute equations or perform comparisons, pass important data, and so on. Number variables specify values such as age of a person, for example, 34. The date and time variable is a type of variable that enables you to store information about any date and time, such as a variable today holds today's date. The main use of date and time variable is to store a specific date and time inside or to perform other operations with them. They may be used to append dates to time-sensitive invoices or documents. Data table variables can store tabular data in rows and columns and may hold large amount of information and act as a database. The practical usage of data tables is to store big pieces of information and do certain operations on it, such as filtering, searching, copying, and so on. They are often used to migrate data from a database to another extract information from a website, and store it locally in a spreadsheet. The generic value variable can store any type of data. It is a proprietary variable of UiPath. It automatically converts to other types of, types of variable to perform certain actions through an automatic conversion mechanism. The user can receive the desired outcome by carefully defining their expressions. The first element in the expression is used as a guideline for the operation that UiPath Studio performs. The queue item variable stores an item which has been extracted from a container of items, or a queue. Through this extraction, the user can further use the queue items in other processes. This is also a variable that is proprietary to UiPath Studio.
An array is a data structure that contains a group of elements of the same data type, such as an integer or string. So an array variable enables users to store multiple values of the same data type. Array is a type of collection variable used to store multiple entries. The size of an array is defined when it is created, and it is not dynamic. Here, let's compare array and string. Array is a fixed size sequence collection of elements of the same base types that share a single name and can be used to represent a list of names or numbers. It, the, arrays, um, the elements of arrays are stored continuously in increasing memory locations. It is a special variable that can hold more than one value at a time. Array is mutable, but the length of array is predefined. A string is similar to an array with a few exceptions. String is a sequence of single characters represented as a single data type. It can be stored in any manner in memory locations. It can hold any character data. String is not mutable or immutable. And the size is not predefined. Scope field defines the container in which the variable is available. When the variable is created, user chooses the scope from the scope drop-down field where all major sequences and sections of the program are listed. The user chooses one of these sequences and the variable will then be available in that part of the workflow. The scope of the variable is limited to the selected container. If a variable is declared for a parent activity, then the variable is available in the entire workflow. However, if the variable is declared in any specific activity, then it is available only for the scope of that activity. The scope of a variable cannot exceed the workflow in which it was defined. The scope of each variable should be defined correctly. The variables should be defined only in the scope in which they are used. Making multiple variables unnecessarily available for the entire workflow can cause efficiency issues as well as possibility for confusion. Arguments are used to pass data from one workflow to another by storing the data dynamically. They are similar to variables as they store data and pass it on. However, the variables pass data between activities, while arguments pass data between workflows. So arguments enable the users to reuse automation projects. Hence, they can be accessed outside the workflows in which they are defined and are useful in automation projects consisting of multiple workflows. The user can configure an argument through its properties, which are similar to that of variables. The arguments have the following properties name, direction, argument type, and default value. Name specifies the name of the argument. It represents the title of the information that is being stored by the argument. If the user does not add a name to an argument, it is automatically generated. Direction. As arguments pass data between workflows, the user needs to specify the direction from or to which the data is passed. It can be in, out, and in and out. And we will explain this in the next section. Argument type defines the kind of data that the argument is intended to store. In UiPath Studio, 
The type is declared when the argument is created. The types of arguments are string, number, array, date and time, boolean, and data tables. Default value is the data that an argument holds. Argument direction tells the application where the information stored in them is supposed to go. That is to say, it specifies the direction from or to which the data is passed. The directions are in representing the argument that can only be used within the given workflow. Out means the argument can be used to pass data outside of a given workflow. In and out means the argument can be used both within and outside of a given workflow. Argument names should be prefixed for easy identification of the argument direction, such as in file name, out text result, and IO representing in and out, retry number. Arguments and variables are quite similar to each other. They both are used to store information of a particular data type and pass it on. But some of the difference between them are arguments stores data and passes it between workflows. However, variables store data and pass them in between activities. An argument can be used across multiple workflows, but a variable is limited to the workflow in which it was defined. An argument is created and modified through arguments panel, whereas a variable is created and modified through the, var the variable panel. An argument is defined by properties, including name, direction, type, and default value whereas a variable is defined by name, type, scope, and default value. If a user does not assign a value to an argument, it does not have any default value, whereas if a user does not assign a default value to a variable, it is automatically assigned to a, to a default value.